This is one of those videos that you will probably watch multiple times and find something new to apply every single time. Scheduling can be the biggest difference between a footballer who is making great progress versus someone who is overtraining and or always getting hurt. Let's compare two promising footballers in season doing everything they can to be the best. Footballer A, we will call Killian, is a 19 year old left winger who is playing the best football of his life. He has been prioritizing his match performance and recovery. Killian has continued to see small but crucial increases in his 30 meter dash speed and vertical jump power. He's done this by planning his sessions around his team schedule with the minimal effective dose of training. Killian has only picked up one minor ankle sprain all season which occurred in training after a hard tackle but nothing serious. Now footballer B we will call Nihilik is a 19 year old right winger who has just broke into the starting lineup is also playing the best football of his life. One of his goals is to make great gains in his speed and vertical jump power so he's been adding more training sessions than usual. Nihilik sometimes feels he doesn't recover the best but pushes and grinds through it anyway. Just recently he's picked up a few knocks so he makes sure he's doing more injury prevention work and additional mobility and ice bath sessions. Now based on this can you tell me which footballer will have a longer and healthier career? The grind is respected, but as a high level player, prioritizing match performance and recovery will be crucial for success. More training doesn't always mean better results, especially in the context of an already congested schedule. This is why Killian will statistically have a better season and see more gains. Consistency and smart scheduling will be key. In today's video, I'll be going over how you can maximize your in season and off season training schedule to continue seeing realistic progress all year. I'll be going over bad versus good sessions, in-season and off-season planning, how to fit your individual sessions, and maximizing recovery according to research. I want to begin by going over the differences between off-season and in-season training. Use this as a guide. The off-season is where you can and should make great strides in taking your physical side to the next level. Off-seasons usually last between 8 to 12 weeks and you need to make sure that by the end you are stronger, faster, and more powerful and one of the fittest coming into preseason. This is where you can add more volume and sessions. The off season will begin with a training program for general preparation. This is what I call the foundational phase, which is done at the beginning of the off season to build capacity, tissue tolerance, also known as the hardware of the body. The closer we get to season or preseason, the more specific training becomes. And just because you feel you already have a great foundation, doesn't mean you should skip this phase. Especially if you've been hitting lower reps all season, doing this foundation will be great for capacity and tissue tolerance. This phase can last anywhere from two to six weeks. Training will have gym and power, which includes strength, weighted or Olympic lifts, and plyometrics three times a week. Speed, which I like to separate into acceleration, multi-directional speed, and top speed, will be done two to three times a week. Fitness can be done up to three times a week. And for a full guide on what to do and how to program fitness, watch my match fitness video right here. In season is where your extra training typically decreases, especially for those at a higher level training two to four times a week with their team and one to two matches a week. Individual volume is lower to maximize match performance and recovery. Volume will be lower in reps, sets, frequency or all the above. Training will have gym and power, which again includes strength, weighted or Olympic lifts, and plyometrics one or two times a week. Speed will be done once or twice a week if microdosed. In a microdose situation, a good example can be three reps of 30 meter sprints with three minute rest between sets twice a week. Fitness will be done zero to one time, sometimes twice if less or no playing time. Understand this is not a one size fits all guide and most of what you see in my videos is an oversimplification so you have something to go off of. Someone in season who's only training with the team twice a week with one game with minimal playing time could do more volume similar to someone in the off season. For example, one of my online clients trying to break into the first team was in this exact situation. So I was able to plug in more fitness to make up for the lack of playing time and speed when it was appropriate. Another exception to off season is if you're playing summer league where you play two games a week during the summer and maybe two to three team training sessions a week. For this scenario, your volume may be similar to someone in season. So many other factors come into play. So I will be providing examples so you can determine what player you are and if you need more training or less training. I want to go over some bad examples and my reasoning on why they are not ideal. A few things to keep in mind, all these examples assume the player is playing high level and or getting more than 60 to 70 minutes a match. Also the days for team training are just examples, red means high intensity training, orange means medium, and yellow means lighter training. I hope you begin to understand the thought process and reasoning behind the following choices as that is what is key to creating a good schedule. If you remember 
Footballer B, Nihilik, this is his schedule right here. Match Saturday and team training Tuesday and Thursday. Nihilik makes the mistake of doing speed session Sunday the day after the match. The day after the match should be a recovery day since the body's ability to be powerful and fast won't be back to 100% until after two to three days. So getting speed gains will be little to none and he's only increasing the risk of injury. Monday should be off feet, a lower volume gym day or an upper body day. Wednesday is good, but then messes up by having a full body plus speed day on Friday. It's no wonder why Nihilik has picked up a few knocks and not recovering well throughout season. Example number two, this week Nihilik has two matches a week on Wednesday and Saturday and trains with the team Tuesday and Thursday. He does good by recovering on Sunday, but should we think his session on Monday, Thursday and Friday? These are the weeks where it can be very hard to do extra individual sessions and doing more isometrics, less volume, and upper body only should be considered. Again, it's no surprise why Nihilik has picked up a few knocks and not recovering well. Now on to some good examples. I'm gonna be showing you eight, so pick the one that fits your needs. Example number one and two. For games on Saturday and team training Tuesday and Thursday, there are two I want to show you. The day after the match is rest day. The following day, Monday, MD plus two, is active recovery, upper body, and extra work for subs for those with less playing time. Tuesday can be the highest volume day because the match is four days away and can do either of the following for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Friday can be an optional upper body day. I actually recommend you rest that day before a game, but sometimes there's no stopping players who want to do that extra work. Example number three. For schedules with matches on Sunday, you apply the same concepts that recover Monday, and hopefully team training is lighter. Keep in mind, you're going to run into unideal situations or maybe Tuesday training is very intense. These are things I want you to keep in mind. The actual sessions would be done Wednesday through Friday, where on Friday, you begin to taper down. Just to mix things up, because I know many at a high level do train three times a week. This is similar to a team training schedule. One of my pro players playing in the first division sent me. I don't remember what I programmed him, but I will add the individual and gym training sessions on the same day of team training with the full body and plyos for only 30 minutes, since the possibility of Tuesday, Wednesday being the most intense relative to the other days. By keeping your sessions 30 minutes, you're able to really preserve your energy, still get some good training in, and you're able to focus on your team training. Two matches example. For those with two matches a week, understand that your training will be very conservative, where all team training may be light, tactical, or film sessions, just to name a few. Extra training will be difficult, but could be something like you see on the screen. Wednesday game day could be a game day lift potentiation session, including mobility and maybe a few jumps. Like always, subs and players who don't play have to make up for their lack of game time. Other things to keep in mind is that you can do 30 minute gym and speed sessions to be conservative as practice intensity isn't always predictable. For those who have team training in the morning, well, you'll be able to plan your afternoon session much better than somebody who has their team training in the afternoon. Off season schedules will have a lot more training and can look something like this. Three or two gym sessions, to plyo and speed sessions. And I recommend having an off day midweek to continue having higher quality sessions. As you can see, not as complex compared to the in season. And if you follow a schedule like this guys, you will be making great gains and progress. Team, lucky for you, I have created programs that fit this exact model so you can easily know where and how to plug in my training. These programs have helped hundreds upon hundreds of players just like you looking for programs designed for the footballer. If you're ready to increase your strength and speed, head over to my website. Now the biggest question everyone wants to know how to fit in your individual and fitness sessions. I think the answer will shock many but this is the easiest part in my opinion. Follow these guidelines for fitness. Don't do it on back-to-back -back days and keep it at least 48 to 72 hours before games. If you follow that you'll be doing okay. Keep in mind there's always exceptions to the rules but we'll keep it at that so you have something to go off of. In this example of the off-season schedule I'll program fitness the same day they have their gym session. One can be done in the morning, one can be done in the evening or vice versa. During season, it's a little bit tougher because it will vary greatly depending on team training intensity and whether or not you're doing fitness with your team. But sometimes doing it the day before or even the night after team training is very much possible if running volume with your team was low that day. For those with little to no playing time, you can plug in fitness the night of match day or the next day to make up for the lack of playing time. For a more in-depth guide to fitness, check out one of my best videos to date. As far as when you can do your footy sessions, do it when and where you can. Tough to tell you exactly where it goes because so many factors vary. So I like to approach it like this. During the off season, separate your sessions into morning and evening. Footy in the morning and gym in the evening or vice versa. During season, 
more caution is required and I'd argue lighter individual sessions can be done more frequently than intense ones. And by light, I mean something like bod touches or bod mastery or something that doesn't use up too much energy, especially if you're keeping them between 30 to 60 minutes. I know players who get up really early in the morning just to get a few extra touches on the wall almost every day before they get their day started. I also know others who would do it after or even before team training for just 15 to 30 minutes. Where I would recommend to proceed with caution is when you begin to add more intense sessions Sessions. For example, doing a two hour shooting session followed by sprints and then team training, that raises a red flag to me because of the repetitive nature of shooting along with sprinting. Your risk of overusing that hip flexor is high. Instead, shoot for 20 minutes one day and maybe one other time during the week and doing multiple things in that individual footy session is gonna help minimize injuries and prevent overtraining certain muscle groups. Ultimately, it's nearly impossible to give you a perfect guide. Too many variables come into play. The best approach is slowly adding training volume, see how the body responds and modify. Also, no sudden spike in training volume. The body does not like whenever you go from three training sessions a week to six training sessions a week. You just increase volume by 100%. The body or the tendons, the ligaments is not gonna like that. You'll notice the program examples say minimal effective dose. All that means is that we're approaching each training week with the goal of getting the most gains with the least amount of training, which is a great way to approach training during season. A good program followed consistently for one year with the minimal effective dose will go so far and allow you to really focus on your game. Recent research has highlighted that players who take two days off post-match day suffer two to three times less injuries. Martin and colleagues took data from 18 elite teams performing in top leagues. In my opinion, this is groundbreaking research and a great guide for many players to use. And of course, this applies more to starters and those in elite football or with lots of playing time. This is why some pro clubs, from my experience, will usually have the next day off for starters and off-feet work the second day. And off-feet can include an active recovery every day or an upper body session like you saw in my examples. You'll also notice we train full body instead of your typical mainstream push pull legs method. I made a whole video explaining how full body can be the best method as a serious footballer. So go ahead and check it out if you want to learn more. For more information on reps and sets, you can check these two videos out. Great videos that need to be updated. So maybe that will be the next video I create. If there's anything I mentioned here that you want me to make a full in-depth video of, let me know down below and I'll see what I can do. Thank you guys so much for your support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Watch it as many times as you need to so you can really grasp everything. Be on the lookout. I got new programs coming out soon. This summer is going to be big for armor strength. I said that in my last video, but 2023 guys, this is the year right here.